Good afternoon, my name is uh, Miguel, Miguel Angel Perez Ochicale and the title of my PhD work is uh, Nonlinear Dynamics Approach to Human Activity Recognition Using Inertial Sensors. Uh, to get started, let's uh, examine why is human activity recognition a challenging task. Basically, uh, uh, we have uh, four different areas in which, for example, we have different or various types of activities and we can say that as a human we can, for example, do uh, primitive activities such as walking, running or, uh, or riding a bike um, or, or in the case of the phone you say you text or you making a call or, or another daily activities are, for example, drinking, eating speaking or brushing your teeth or in the military uh, applications are kneeling or crawling so that's that is a great variation of uh, types of activities on the other hand we have also different motion capture uh, systems in which uh, there are mainly three which are inertial sensors floor sensor and video based sensor motion capture, capture systems on the other hand, uh, once we have uh, decided which uh, uh, motion capture system, uh, we have to characterize the signals by using time domain or frequency domain uh, techniques. Uh, and there are others which are, for example, nonlinear dynamics concepts or principal component analysis. So then, then one, once we have uh, characterized the, <coughs> the signal, you have, uh, well, part of the human activity recognition is to classify these uh, this, uh, different signals by using different algorithms. So, in, in general, that, that is why it's quite a challenging task, because as you can see, the, the chosen approach depends on the types of activity that you will have to recognize, the, the kind of sensor that you have to use, and the and there are, uh, as well, different uh, characterization algorithms and classification uh, uh, algorithms that you have to apply. So now, let me give you a, a little um, uh, details about the literature, literature review. And why, why I'm choosing this, uh, uh, the, the approach of uh, selecting nonlinear dynamics. This comes from, from, the, from the clinical research because they are using time series and in order to uh, differentiate uh, or in order to find uh, uh, pathologies in patients. So for example, you, you, the, the clinicals are differentiating between epileptic and arrhythmic uh, patients by, by using this uh, state-space uh, transformation as well as, for example, what one of the researchers is working in identifying the younger and uh, older patients by uh, finding patterns in the state space. Uh, another researcher is working with, uh, uh, also with, with this time, uh, time series reconstruction, and what he is doing here is uh, by collecting the data from an accelerometer, he can uh, obtain different patterns for walking, uh, running, or cycling. And he applied different um, machine learning algorithms in order to uh, classify the, the activities. An another application of this, uh, this uh, method of the time delays is the identification. So they, the, the the SAMA and others collect data from many participants in order to identify different uh, the the the, particip the volunteers and as you can see there are like different formations in this uh, state uh, space. This is another article which is quite interesting to me because he is doing uh, he is measuring dexterity based on the fractal dimension. So basically, what he what we have here is a hyper 
Hyper cylindrical face space of the experts and novice tennis players. So here is that that is also one one of, of my uh, of one article that I'm quite interested. So now, what are the uh, question of my of my research? There are there are three ones. So these are how the reconstructed state space can quantify the dexterity of human body activities. And another one is, is the Taken's theorem the best tool to, to quantify human activities in terms of the reconstructed uh, state space? And which concepts from nonlinear dynamics can be used to characterize human body activities? So now let, let me explain you a little bit about the reconstructed state space. So basically, what we have here is that uh, time series that it comes from the from the tools that we are using. In, in our case, we are um, using uh, inertial sensors, and, and and we collect time series in order to apply these taken theorems, which basically use two parameters, which are m and tau. Then basically is a transformation of a time series, which is in the dimension one. Then we uh, embedded the space and uh, m dimension, and then we can reduce the dimensionality by applying this algorithm PCA. And the idea is to reconstruct a similar, a similar um, dynamical system, which is, which, is, uh, which is similar to the unknown dynamical system. That is the idea of, of the taken theorems. Um, the taken theorems is basically a time delay vector which has two parameters, which uh, and those parameters are m, which is the embedding dimension, and tau, the embedding delay. And those two parameters uh, are quite important in order to reconstruct the state space. So basically, the the idea of choosing a proper value for m and tau give us the unfolded manifold, and also uh, we can see different formations. Uh, at the moment, I have found two um, uh, uh, publications in which they are um, using methods to obtain the minimal values for, for the embedding parameters, which are m and tau. So I'm working, I'm understanding how they, how they are uh, computing these values. And I, I'm also running uh, different simulations. Now, in order to, uh, that, in order that you understand better, what I'm doing is, is that this is a Lorentz system, which is a three differential system. And when, once I solve it, have these three uh, time series, which are x, y, and theta. Then I plot x and y in, in the state space and theta and x on z and y. And y. And as you can see, this is this is a, a well. Th that's that is what we call a manifold in the in a two-dimensional state space. So now, by applying the Taken's theorems, which is are the this this is the first embedded uh, delay and the second embedded uh, delay, and this is the original manifold, which which comes from the x and y solution of the differential equations. Now, what we are going to see is how the values of uh, tau affects the reconstruction. So, uh, so for, 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 well, so visually we can see that once we reach the tau value of 9, we can see that we have a, a similar manifold. So that is, a, that is a problem that we are dealing right now what kind of uh, mathematical tool we are going to use to, in order to let us know that this is uh, the, the proper value for tau and, and tau and the dimension. Now let me show, let, let me show you how the, the manifold change has increased the value of tau. So as you can see when I reach the, for example, the tau value of 24, the, the formation of the manifold uh, is graphically different from this one. 
uh, from a mathematical point of view, the topological uh, properties maintain the original manifold, but as a, but visually, uh, this is quite different. So that's that is part of my well, that, that is one of the problems that we are dealing right now. What are the proper values for for the reconstruction of the state space? So now I'm going to uh, show you why I'm working. And basically, the goals of this month is is to determine te the technique or techniques to quantify the dexterity of salsa dancers based on the analysis of the reconstruction state space. And, and another point is to submit a paper in the International Symposium of Wearable uh, Computers, and the deadline is on April 10, 2015. And we well, I'm also developing the the hardware for collecting the data with, with this inertial measurement unit. Um, this inertial measurement unit has a magnetometer, uh, gyroscope, and accelerometer. And I am creating this um, uh, class in C++ in order to compute the time delay in the embedding parameters and the principal component analysis. So for, for our current experiments, we are um, we are um, invited uh, participants in order that they dance seven beginners dance salsa fit patterns, and and we, uh, and we ask the participants to wear the sensors on the on both ankles, one of the hip and one right right behind your neck. So we are I'm going to show you just the 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 so, some results that I um, I uh, computed from the from this uh, foot pattern the side crossover. So this is this is a uh, this is a, uh, one participant, and I I just uh, applying the the TKS theorems and the principal component analysis for for this time series. And as you can see, we. We have different uh, manifold formations, so the interesting thing is how we are going to measure these uh, formations in the state space. So, and the other problem is what, what are the proper values for the M and tau? Because here we have a, a dimension of 70 and a delay of 1, 73, 70 and 5. 81, 83, 80, 80 and 5. And 90 and 1, 90 and 3, and 90 and 5. So we are dealing with this, um, uh, with, with what would be the, the best uh, or the better values for M and tau. This is another participant, and as you can see, the, the time series it looks like a cyclical or periodic. But in the state space, it looks like more random. Well, there is no, no really a formation as, as compared to the other participant. This is another one uh, for, for, well, for the same pattern in the same axis. And, and, and another one. So the, the hypothesis that we have right now is that the well that the participants who have no experience with dance they don't have a good timing and you in, and then in the state space reconstruction you are going to see different formations. So I'm dealing with that. So that, that is what I have I have done so far and now I'm going to show you um, uh, the, the, the PhD framework. So this is a general view of my work, which is to uh, collect the data by using a body sensor network um, to use the, the state space reconstruction. And then I can also investigate uh, different concepts from nonlinear dynamics, which are the Lyapunov exponent, Poincaré maths, and Kenop maths. 
And, and another important thing that I'm interested in is once I understand the data, I'm going to use one uh, particular uh, classification algorithm. And finally, um, find different applications for my proposal. So yes, that's all. I don't know if you have any questions. Well, uh, that was an interesting presentation as well. Very clear. Um, and you've explained most of it quite well. There's one question though. Um, how successful are a, any competing human activity recognition methods? Um, I mean, you'll do your research and you'll come up, let's say, with something that is successfully recognizing what is a human activity with a certain probability, let's say 88% or 92%. How do we know that that's good compared to the state of the art in terms of other methodologies for recognizing human activities. Mm. You know, are other methods 50% likely to recognize successfully human activity or 99%? Mm. So um, it's something you haven't really covered in your literature survey. Your literature survey was mainly on your methods, but not on what the competition is doing. Mm. And that, it would have been interesting to look into that, but uh, it's still early days, I'm sure you yes, can get uh, I, Yes, I, I think I'm going to deal dealing with that ideas on the on the next year. Okay. Because at, at the moment I'm just focusing on understanding the the concept of take and steal. Sure. No, that, that, that was okay. good. Any other questions? I'm thinking of the data course that there's lots of non-initial data sets. Mm. Okay. Okay.